Uh, Melissa Power joins us. She is with the Berkeley County Board of Education. Melissa, good morning to you, and thank you so much for being with us. Good morning, Rob. Uh, thank you for having me this morning. We are ready to start a new school year. You ready for this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, is everything working 100% and recovered from the cyber attack last year? You know, I haven't received any um, recent update, but from what I am gathering from uh, both teachers and other staff members, um, they're they're pretty they're pretty solid starting out this year. So we we should be good. We've we've increased some security measures, so um, hopefully, um, you know. Nothing is nothing is one hundred percent foolproof, but mm -hmm. you know we we've taken some some extra extra steps that you know through the guidance um, of others um, as we've gone through this. But uh, um, just trying to make sure everything is is locked up as much as we can. I want to ask you a general question about your involvement with the board, uh, Melissa. Obviously, you were in the private sector before joining the board of education. How has that experience yeah. helped you on the board of education, and how has it helped? the students, teachers, and residents of Berkeley County, your perspective on this from the private sector? Well, you know, when I started um, running for the Board of Ed and when I was uh, first born in, I was working for a construction company. Um, so when we started really looking at the bond and what was covered with the bond, um, you know, there were some concerns of mine that I had that I expressed and some others, um, you know, echoed their um desire to re-review the numbers of the items that had been estimated previously just to make sure that our numbers were accurate. Um, we we did that, but it was that experience that helped me, you know, navigate some of that for, for some, uh, some of us on the board that just, you know, has more education or legislative background um, versus construction. It, it just, it lent a hand in that area just to get us started. Um, we really leaned into um some of the other experts, you know, that have come in and, and helped other school systems build and, and really understand that that landscape. But um, that was one of the biggest things that I feel like I've contributed um, to our county um, so that we can get better infrastructure going for our school system. Um, and then another aspect would be, you know, just understanding from my own personal experience working in the school. Um, from the from the support personnel you know side of things and how sometimes you know uh, legislative uh, laws whether that's you know through the federal government or even through the state government can can actually really impact the classroom and how a teacher can function um, you know with her with her uh, education plan that she'd really love to he or she would really love to implement but can be restrictive in some ways um, so it's it's been it's been good from from both of those angles so um both of those areas would would say i would say have helped me Speak, in this particular area you brought up the legislature and certainly the uh -huh. uh, legislature has passed bills that are intent at least the intent is to help improve education and discipline in berkeley county schools can you tell me what the practical effect of that will be as parents and teachers will see as this school year begins? So earlier uh, in the spring um, and into the summer, we had a uh, discipline policy review committee get together. We have not necessarily seen results of that yet. They're still reviewing. Um, but one of the things that we look to try and do is make sure that our policy within the Board of Education of you know, Berkeley County um, is, is, is staying in the parameters of what the legislation um, was, as well as what our state uh, Department of Education has, has laid out for us. I want to go to Alonzo here, too, because I know you're on one of the committees that deals with discipline in the schools, Alonzo. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was actually appointed by Melissa to help the schools out. Um, so I guess um, we're just trying to applicate or find application for House Bill 2890, and that's mm -hmm. uh, working to basically have mandated reporting for incidents in the schools and then also working um, in conjunction with what works for the teachers um, in their classroom to be able to kind of uh, rein in some, uh, you know, I guess behaviors that aren't, you know, 
conducive to a good class environment. So much of what we've been doing in that committee is uh, trying to figure out, you know, what tools can we imply or implore to uh, make schools work better. But I mean, this is Melissa's uh, time on the show, so I, I, I can find another time to talk about, I guess, what we're doing. Um, but uh, yeah, I have it's valuable, though. You know, I mean, I want those. It's absolutely valuable. We need we need people, whether they're they are working in the school system or not in the school system, to understand how legislation has has a huge impact on the day to day goings on in the classroom. I yeah. mean, to yeah. his 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 own point, um, you know, legislation can have such an impact that I don't I don't know if every single individual in our county, can, you know, has that level of awareness that Alonzo is getting right now of how impactful it can be. And Alonzo doesn't work for the school system and he doesn't, he's not on the board of education, but he's getting a, a really good glimpse into what happens in Charleston impacts, you know, um, you know, Hedges elementary school or spring mills intermediate or whatever that looks like. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty interesting how, how some of that comes together. So. Bill. Yeah. Good morning, Melissa. Uh, uh, when Jackie Long was on a couple of weeks ago, I raised the issue of the, the COVID dollars uh, coming into Berkeley mm-hmm. County. Uh, I, I realize this is before your watch. Uh, we've, so, yeah. we've seen in one county, Upshur County, where there was very there were violations of how the money was spent. What is mm-hmm. your comfort level that Berkeley County utilized the COVID dollars the way they should have? I can absolutely tell you that uh, when we've gone throughout this year, we've, we've examined certain um, line items that would tap into that. Uh, there were questions that myself as well as other board members would ask. Um, and we, I feel that we have done a good double check to make sure that we are not doing something out of line. We have several people um, who are very vigilant within our, our board office. Um, so I would be surprised if what we've been presented was um, completely false or were, you know, um, not at all true in some fashion um, because of, of the depth that we are actually receiving some of the financial uh, numbers. There would, there would have to be some pretty, pretty major law violations on that one. But, and I'm confident because I'm seeing um, in other areas where it's absolutely true and it's carried out and we're seeing those monies at work. So I, it leads me to be very confident. And you can see the impact. I mean, we're, we're doing things with summer, with our summer programs and stuff that is tapping into some of this. So, you know, you can see it play out, um, you know, when we have the number of children and, and staff um, to support our summer programs within our school system. So um, that's just one area. Um, that, that I can tell you, um, we, we've, I feel like we've done a, a decent job, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Was there another area that we could have spent more money in or done better investment in? Maybe, but, um, that was again before my time. Um, cause a lot of that money had been, had already been spent before I'd gotten onto the board. So, um, I can only speak to what has happened when I've been with the board for the last year. So. Well, uh, I commend you and the board for doing this. Uh, uh, I have a lot of faith in our school system, and I have a lot of faith yeah. in our Board of Education. Uh, but one of your functions as a Board of Education is yeah. over is oversight. And it appears that mm-hmm. you've taken that obligation quite seriously, and you've looked at it sufficiently enough that you feel that there were no substantive violations done. Yeah, it would have to be pretty, like, falsified in order for that to, to take place. And even then... You know, our, our school system is, is very good that if something were, like that were happening, we would hear about it. Um, whether, you know, someone would go to, you know, um, Mr. Murphy or Ms. Long, myself, Mr. Martin or, or Mr. Wright, we would, we would hear it. Um, because we've, I feel that we have garnered the, the support from uh, both the, the office as well as, you know, in the schools um, to say, hey, you know, <laughs> Something doesn't doesn't look right or smell right kind of thing. So, And we've not heard any of that. Melissa uh, Power, our guest here from the Board of Education, Maria Lawrence. Melissa, good morning. So there's some conversation um, in our 
chat here um, about <laughs> Mr. Murphy's um, uh, initiative to uh, freeze some um, admin administrative positions, I'm guessing at the board office primarily. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? I guess it didn't, um, obviously it didn't pass. Um, I think, you know, commonly people have this mindset that there are just a ton of administrators and it's too heavy there, blah, 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 blah. But, um, um, but talk a little bit about that. I know that wasn't your initiative, but um, what are your thoughts about, um, about that whole piece? Yeah, so I actually didn't know um, that there was going to be that proposal from Mr. Murphy, um, you know, much to, I think, a lot of people, and even my own, um, you know, maybe even surprise when I, when I joined the board, there wasn't as, you know, the, the backdoor conversations that, that I think um, maybe either happened before or maybe, you know, a lot of people might think there, there could be. Um, we're, we try to really stick to um, the rules and, and regulations for the Open Meetings Act, and, and we really try to, to stick to those because we don't want to have an issue in our county with that. Um, but to answer your question, you know, in, in outside of, if you're looking outside in, you see a lot of administrative staff and is that is all of the administrative staff needed? I, I think that there needs to be a look at it um, to put a freeze on it. I hesitate to it because some of the some of the positions uh, that we were looking at were we, we were just going to be replacing a person who had vacated the position previously. So it wasn't a creation of it was it was just a replacement of a previous person who held um, that position previously. So it was just a uh, I, I couldn't consciously say no to that only because I haven't done an evaluation of every single, um, and there's not been in, in my understanding and I could absolutely be wrong. So any board member, please just on, uh, in the comments or, or whatever, just comment freely after I make this statement. I don't know if there has been an evaluation of the current structure in the last couple of years. And so I would want to take a look at what that looks like. And again, then there brings into, you know, the controversy of do you bring in an outsider and how much does that cost? And, and so there's just, it, there's a lot that goes into that question, Maria, and I, it's hard. You've got a lot of legislative rules. You have a lot of standards that need to be upheld with the state and with the federal, um, you know, dollars that we receive. And so with that comes administrative responsibilities. Sure, sure. Administrative responsibilities, there comes increased need for increased personnel. So there is a piece of this, it's a double-edged sword. If you want the federal dollars, then you have to comply with some of the requirements. And if you comply with some of the requirements, that means hiring more staff sometimes in order to, to comply with it. So if that's the case, <laughs> it's a, I mean, you're looking at it going, okay, we need the money, but... Right. Well, and I, I mean, I understand, I don't understand, but I know probably enough to be dangerous about the school aid formula and how that works in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, a specific number of teachers based on the number yeah. of students and, and service personnel the same, the same way, but administratively, you know, that's always been, just across the board, that's always been something that people have a tendency um, to look more closely at. And um, I think that, you know, that obviously one of the ways to, and I, again, Mike Height commented in the, in the comments here that attrition is a way to take care of some of that, but yet then who gets to, gets to do that person's mm -hmm. job if you don't fill that mm -hmm. job? It's got to be, Correct. you know, they're not... No matter what people say, they're not just sitting at a board office eating bonbons. I mean, but, I, I, 
don't think that's the case. So. But one of the uh, one of the greatest problems of this and any other organization is right sizing. It's Absolutely. An, it's an easy Absolutely. word. To, it's an easy word uh, to throw out, but it's much more difficult to uh, to achieve. To accomplish. Yeah, and exactly. uh, and I know at least one uh, one organization in the county that is facing that just now, and it's uh, it's it's quite painful. Uh, it co- mm-hmm. Goes back to the point that you raised earlier. There had been an assessment a few years or so ago as part of your board oversight board of education oversight is it time to do another hard look at right sizing of our schools yeah Yeah. i know and that's a good question yeah and that 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 is a good question you know is is it is now the right time um we've just you know gone through a superintendent search we've hired the superintendent we've gone through the bond process we've got the levy coming we've got um a lot of various things happening a lot of you know, moving parts to this and when is the right time. Our county is continuing to grow. And when you continue to, when the county continues to grow, not only do you need more teachers, more support staff, but you need more administrators because if you have one administrator for, let's say, 500 children, um, you're going to need, if you then double in size, you're going to need another administrator, period. That's, it, you need to have that ability to to add that, and I think sometimes we have forgotten that our you know while our county is still um, small in comparison to some of our surrounding counties, um, we are actually managing our dollars pretty pretty well. And our staff, I can tell you from working in in Washington County Public Schools, um, they are we are very close. We are very close to um, their numbers when it comes to students. And uh, I think it's within, I want to say it's within 10,000 students. And their administration um, and how they function is, yes, is different because it's in a different state. However, it is a lot more. They have a ton more when it comes to board office staff. And we do a lot with the little that we have. And our staff one of the things I can absolutely say, I have I have seen a lot of hardworking staff um, at our board office. I don't know how many times, even our with our board meetings, where we can be 11, 12 o'clock at night doing our board meetings because we're doing a lot of that oversight, um, and we're we're really asking some tough questions, and we're trying to make sure that what we're approving or not approving is the right decision, and so. That's, those staff are there until that time, and then they're right back up. I, I know um, Elaine Bobo, she, I don't know how she does what she does, but she's an amazing woman, and she is there sometimes till midnight if we're doing a meeting till midnight, and she's right back at it at 7 a.m. Yeah, just dealing so, with the sheer number of emails, I send her alone's a full-time job, uh, Melissa. Uh, you know, and, that's, and to, to that point, she's just one person. Now, she's one person in the communications department, but she, she, that's her she does this like and she does it with a passion and i love that about her um so there's this piece that i i sit there and i'm going you know it's hard to answer do we do it now do we not i mean we're not done growing so so if we do a study now what happens in two years do we have to do another study like when's the right time it's hard to figure that out um but we've we've got to look at something but you know when are we doing that it's probably not going to be in this particular month <laughs> so uh, um, but i don't know so i and i want to uh just add to what you're kind of saying as well because i know at least last year you guys had the same amount of administrators as jefferson but you had twice the amount of okay. students um so yeah. i just want to throw that out to listeners but um i guess i want to ask you what is uh, Berkeley County looking at, at doing with, I guess, the funds allocated right now that you guys have? And uh, if there's any kind of projects that you guys are working on um, as a board to kind of find consensus on some things and, and move forward. In respect to what? I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, uh, just I mean, in general, I mean like, are we, are, are we looking at any uh, projects and stuff? You said that we have the levy coming. We have the um mm-hmm. uh the school bonds is there any like specific project that's going to be uh, addressed or coming out of uh, what we were able to uh, collect via uh, these processes yeah yeah so if you're looking if you're talking about the bond we actually get a bond update um almost every single board meeting um we are in process of i mean if 
I've seen a lot of discussion on um, social media about Tomahawk Intermediate. You know, it's getting a new roof. Uh, we're putting in additional portables until the addition is actually added on. So there's been some activity over over Tomahawk Intermediate, and that is that is part of our process. Um, you know, and and projects that we are we are focusing on and making sure that we, um, um, you know, are managing managing our money well, um, and making sure that at the end of the day, you know, if, if prices can fluctuate. A year ago, there was you know pricing for for lumber is different than pricing for lumber now. So. Um, just to, to give you and you know that perspective. So there's um, there will be fluctuations, and sometimes you know even though we put an estimate on something, uh, might cost more, might cost less. So we're asking those questions, and we're we're keeping a good tab on what the projects are are doing as far as the process, you know, from from start to finish. Um, I know that school safety is another huge um, endeavor that we're trying to to focus. Some of our time and attention on, um, so that's going to be something that um, really gets you know going in, in this coming school year. Uh, we've got safe school entrances that are that are going to be implemented, um, you know, across the board um, over the summer and then into the fall. So there's there's a lot going on from from a building perspective. Um, Melissa, has so that has that worked? That can take a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Has that work already begun? And in, in with the safe school entrances, will many of the schools have been updated by the time school doors open Monday? Yes. So there's there are a lot. Of, there's a, been a lot of work. I don't. I do not have an update as far as whether every school has been addressed, but I do know that there was a a lot of work being done over the summer. Um, so I would need to get back to you on the exact answer for that one. And before we run out of time, real quick, uh, I know the legislature passed a bill that allowed for an aid to be used somewhere up to third grade, and the schools in Berkeley County have decided first grade would be where that extra aid would be uh, implemented. If I have that accurate, uh, confirm that for me, please, and, and then tell me how the process worked to choose first grade. So I, my personal... I, I personally would would have preferred third grade, but um, you know I, I would I would have preferred that that method first. But um, that is something that that I I don't know that. And correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like that was not something that we decided as a board. That was decided for us, and we had to comply with that starting in first grade. I don't know if that was a state issue that got handed down to us. I don't know that it was first grade specifically that got started. I, I will say the last, um, and I know a lot of people have seen, I haven't been at uh, all the meetings uh, physically um, over the course of the last couple of months. My dad actually is, it has received a double lung transplant. So there's been a couple of meetings I have not attended. So if there was a decision specifically to that, it might have been handled before, you know, while I was out. Understandable. Um, yeah, I was told each county had that. the opportunity to select what grade. Uh, so my understanding was may have been an administrative that. decision. Yeah. You know, so, so. just a quick um, a quick plug, uh, Melissa. I was at the new teachers Whoop. breakfast last Friday. You can't help but get pumped up when you see. 150, oh, yeah. 170, bright, and they're not all young, yeah. by the way, faces, people who are having a second career or what have you. It was <laughs> awesome. Just a lot of fun, enthusiasm, um, just a great morning. Yeah, I, you know, I, I attended that last year. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, the, the enthusiasm is definitely contagious sure is you walk out of there and and you you definitely feel you know that this is that this is going to be a great year and um i can only imagine this year um and how it it also got started uh you know i would had the i have the pleasure of of knowing personally the the teacher of the year uh, uh rebecca catlett and um what an amazing lady and teacher well deserved um for her uh for our county and um she from what i understand gave um a little bit of uh a, 
speech, encouragement to the new teachers, and um, all I have heard from from others that that were in attendance is, you know, such an amazing encourager um, that she is, you know, really encouraging the the new teachers coming in. So um, it's it's really good that we're able to tap into uh, our veteran teachers to help assist in pumping up and encouraging our our new teachers coming into the county. So it's it, it was it's pretty cool watching new teachers first year or or otherwise you know maybe if they're returning after a, a hiatus um you know whatever that whatever that looks like maybe it's a second career you know um for them so it's it's really cool uh watching watching their energy come into a room uh is your dad doing okay melissa he's doing amazing um he is currently in the inpatient rehab uh, here in Pittsburgh. And um, we have a tentative discharge from the hospital date given to us. Um, but our family is, we've, we've, we're going to be living like it's COVID. Um, our family will be living like it's COVID um, gotcha. for the next six months to a year. So if you see me out and about and I have a mask on, it's because I can't catch anything. If I catch cold, I could kill my dad. So... <laughs> Don't want that. Um, I, I I would prefer not to um, catch a flu or or a cold, but um, you will see me out as much as I can. Um, uh, but I will likely be wearing a mask <laughs> um, mm-hmm. because I just I I can't afford to be to be down. Best of so. luck to you and and all continued thank recovery you. and health to your pups. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you.